Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, nightly wrap-up show. I'm going to try to keep this uh, short and sweet, as you can hear by my voice, or if you were in the webinar today. I've been fighting some sort of bug since Saturday. As soon as I recorded the video on Saturday, it hit me like a, a, a Mack truck. So uh, I don't know how I got through today's session, but it was uh, pretty good. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, again, take a moment, uh, show some uh, love, some support for the channel. If you like what we're doing, um, click a like. That's all we ask. Click a like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. So a lot of stuff to uh, unwrap today. We're going to try to uh, break it down very, very quickly. Uh, obviously, the horrific news of the uh, assassination. That's what it is. Assassination attempt of uh, former President uh, Donald Trump. Uh, over the weekend, a lot of theories, a lot of conspiracy theories. Again, this is not the platform uh, that we're going to dive uh, into them, but you kind of know what's what, right? You kind of know what's what. Uh, Andrew Tate, I think, said it um, said it best. Okay, first uh, they try to cancel you, uh, then they try to put you in jail, and then they try to kill you. And unfortunately, we saw some just crazy, ugly footage. Uh, this weekend, thank God, I don't care where you are, uh, Democrat, Republican, uh, you're talking about a, taking somebody's life by a, a millimeter, right? A millimeter over to, you know, over to the left, and we're having a completely different conversation, but uh, thank God, right? Thank God no uh, person should ever uh, be killed, okay? So thank God uh, everything turned well, and the, the market rallied. Market initial response was, uh, you know, very, very patriotic. I think that's the best way of saying it. Uh, the market gapped up uh, very, very aggressively. Uh, everything was going well. The biggest, you know, the biggest movers on the gap up was uh, Tesla. Elon Musk came out. Uh, Elon Musk came out and publicly endorsed uh, Trump uh, for president. Uh, you know, at one point, Tesla we had a great, great, great pivot on Tesla. He caught a great balance on Tesla today. Um, at one point, it was up 15, 17 points. As you can see, you know, big sell-off, right? You're talking about a 12-point sell-off uh, into the close. Uh, you had the semiconductors uh, gapping up today, okay? Uh, SMCI, again, uh, over the weekend was added to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, SMCI went red on the day, okay? Um, so you started seeing some of the effects that we were talking about over the weekend update. And if you guys remember the weekend update, we talked about an inside day that occurred Friday from Thursday south, right? And what, what happened was today, we gapped over Friday's channel and instantly lost it. I'm talking about instantly lost it, which is not a good thing. And now we're looking at a double inside day. So if you look at all the data, right? If you look at all the data in front of you, you'll notice a couple of things. Engulfing candle on Thursday, they couldn't rally on Friday. They got sold off today at the top of the range, right from the word go. And the leaders, right? The leaders of this last year, year and a half, rabbit bull market, which are the semiconductors, right? We'll use SMH as a proxy. Well, semiconductors are, again, sold off right from the open, attempted to rally and sold off again. And now they are sitting in a really, really tight channel. Again, you, you could turn around and say, well, this is now three consecutive days of higher lows. Well, this is also three consecutive days of lower highs. So it's a very, very important thing. The fact that the NASDAQ was up today, uh, was up today, you know, you're talking about what? Um, NASDAQ was up nearly 100 points today and the semiconductors were red. Again, considering this is, the group that let us up. That's not really a good sign. And what we talked about over the weekend about some, you know, most names either in an uh, uh, inside day or trading below uh, the previous day's lows, you know, keep this in mind. Look what happened with the majority of stocks today, right? Again, NASDAQ was up today. Look at Meta, right? 
Look at Meta. Now three days in a row. This is Thursday's low, right? This is lower lows, three consecutive days. Look at AMD, right? AMD is just a, a, an inch away from losing the five-day moving average. Look at NVIDIA, right? Look at how tight NVIDIA is on the 10-day moving average. If this, and if this thing starts to slip and the keys start to confirm uh, last Thursday's channel, this is going to get hit. And this is despite, right? This is despite with some really, really aggressive call buying coming in the majority of the morning. They were coming for the 135s, the 136 weeklies, and yet we're still at the bottom of the range. Uh, you look a name, for example, like, again, SMCI is a perfect example. This should have been a celebration of the stock being added to the NASDAQ 100. That means funds that have uh, the broad-based uh, index in their bylaws, they have to buy the stock. The, the, the stock went red on the day. So the bulls need to, you know, they need to get their stuff in order, man. It's not really a great sign when you have the leaders uh, selling off um, it's not really a great sign seeing a name like Tesla, which is the runaway train uh, or the stock du jour of the moment, right? Uh, starting, you know, getting sold off on on or at least any type of gaps. Uh, but more important is we have to see what happens in the next couple of days. The the other side of the you know the other side of the coin is we continue to talk about the Russell. Russell was up six <coughs> percent. Right was up six percent last week, and today the IWM was what up another up another what uh, up another two percent. So you, you have kind of the haves and the have-nots, and the question going into tomorrow's session: Well, can the bulls finally wake up? Uh, you know, can they finally wake up? And is the IWM strong enough with their representation of uh, speculation money to pull up the group? Or are these stocks going to drag everything down? Again, considering the semiconductors were the leaders of this whole bull run for the last year, year and a half, we'll see, right? That's the best way of saying it. Again, like I always say every single day, uh, be prepared on uh, both sides. We had Powell uh, speaking today. Uh, he did uh, mention about uh, the weekend's events. Didn't really say anything that was, you know, mind blowing or ear bending or anything in between. Again, at this juncture, you almost have to ask, why does he keep on talking on a weekly basis? He literally says nothing, or at least nothing of uh, any dramatic, uh, concrete information. But yet, he still does some notable bets that we saw. Uh, some notable bets that we saw this uh, session. Okay. SMHs, speaking of you know potential weakness in SMHs, a buyer came in for $1.5 million on the 265 weekly puts. That's 10,000 of the weekly 165, 265 puts. Uh, that is roughly $9 out of the money. What do they know? We don't know, but there is an obviously a notable bet. Okay. Um, but the biggest eyebrow raiser today was definitely GameStop. So what you're looking at right now uh, on your screen are the notable bets on GameStop for the day, okay? As you'll see, August $29 calls, 340 grand. Okay, that's not really, uh, that's not really, the, you know, the craziness, right? But this is where it starts getting a little odd, right? So they came in for the $30 weeklies. They came in for the August... $50 weeklies. They came in for the August $40, $40 calls, $384,000. They came in for the 35s for the August. They came in for the 35 weeklies and they came in for the $40 August. It's not very, it's not very often that GameStop starts trading 10, 15, 20% out of the money calls, especially on the short term uh, expiration. Today was one of those days, right? Today was one of those days. And you can see here, if it wasn't for these, this upper Bollinger man, that's, they, they gave it a pregnant pause. GameStop handled the sell off pretty well. It closed within 20 cents of the day's highs. You can see here's the chart of the NASDAQ 100 on the 60 minute view, right? Well, let me show you on the five minute view. It's a little, a little better, right? So on the five minute view versus GameStop, right? Versus GameStop, they traded pretty much uh, within 20 cents of the highs. The key for GameStop, number one, we always talk about this all the time, that especially in the options market, two things usually happen. Somebody knows something, which sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. 
But the key is, at least for me, when I'm looking at the option side and I'm looking at a potential trade, I always look at how much are they coming for deep out of the money calls and how short is the expiration. We saw, again, weekly expiration, nearly 10% out of the money uh, or even 15% out of the money for pretty much the whole day. The key with GameStop is if they can get above this Bollinger Band tomorrow, this thing could really wake up. Again, I, Again, do these guys know something? Is it roaring kitty making bets? Is it somebody that's in the know that something's coming out? Who the hell knows? But price action in the options market usually is the preamble for a potential equity run. We'll see if that uh, turns into something uh, or turns into nothing. Uh, NVAX, another name. Uh, they were coming for the $15 calls, $16 calls. We have a nice little pivot here above the 1386 level take, closed at the highs, just like with GameStop, stopped right at the Bollinger Band. Uh, but a beautiful, beautiful move there uh, as well. Uh, Docu, we talked about over the weekend update. Uh, highest close uh, over the week uh, over uh, daily supply finally got back above the 50 day moving average. Uh, this thing looks good, but going into tomorrow, guys, um, I, I'm definitely, definitely watching. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, I'm definitely watching to see if the semiconductors lose last week's channel. That's gonna be very, very important. So let me give you guys some uh, numbers, some concrete numbers for you guys to watch. Uh, guys, write this down. You see this 270 low, right? 270 low was last week's low on the SMHs. Watch that 270 level for the rest of the week. It doesn't necessarily have to happen tomorrow or the next day, but watch that 270 level. If the SMHs give up that 270, considering how big of an impact the semiconductor group is on the whole NASDAQ 100, it's going to be a very, very important level because if the bulls give up that 270 level. Yeah, we're going to we're going to get hit and considering uh how the leaders are acting, right? Nvidia, you know, bear flagging, AMD bear flag, SMCI gets sold off on bad news, on good news being added to the Nasdaq 100. Again, I'm not saying it's a, a cause for concern, but it should be at least a green light, right? Or a red light, especially if you're an investor to turn around and say, "Well, these are big levels. I understand I'm holding them for a longer period of time." But sometimes stocks, when they break down a level, there's no guarantees they're going to come back, right? They probably will. Again, we're in a great, great uh, bull market. But but again, if you are a trader and you're an active trader, again, be aware of these levels. It's super important that you understand that the dynamics and the sentiment of a market changes on a dime. And if stocks and if leaders, right, if leaders are being sold off and especially no good news, that's not usually a good thing. So in the next couple of days, Let's definitely keep an eye on for the semiconductors uh, for a potential uh, test back of Thursday's low. And let's definitely keep an eye on GameStop, okay? Uh, let me give you guys some other names I am watching uh, for uh, tomorrow, right? Let me give you guys some names here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let me give you guys some names here <clears throat> that I'm watching for tomorrow. Guys, look at Snow. You know, keep an eye on Snow. It's held the bottom of the range here three times. If snow loses the bottom of the range, uh, this thing can get hit. Uh, look at Square. Square had a big, big push today. This is very, very close. Uh, very, very close about reclaiming back all the supply. Again, you can see there's no supply uh, after today. So if Square could get back above today's channel, uh, this thing could run. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, there's a small stock, NEXT, right? Good looking chart here, just like uh, just like um, uh, NVAX today and GameStop today, the only reason why it stopped, it stopped at the upper Bollinger Band. Watch this thing for tomorrow. If it could get above uh, the upper Bollinger Band, maybe this thing uh, wakes up as well. And, you know, Bitcoin, right? The Bitcoin stocks uh, went crazy today. Uh, Mara went nuts. Uh, Coinbase went nuts. Look at Riot for tomorrow, right? Look at Riot. Riot just needs to get back above this, well, basically $12 level, right? You see it? Just basically needs to get about above this twelve dollar level to to be uh, to be it really uh, to get loose. But tomorrow it needs to confirm today's channel and any close above this eleven ninety twelve dollar area, and Rye could wake up and join uh, the other names above daily supply. So guys, I'm going to cut it a little bit short. I'm under the weather. I uh, got through the whole session today. Hopefully tomorrow I will be uh, near or hundred percent. With God's help, I will see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.